Good morning, traders, fellow privateers. Welcome to the Asian preview in the North American wrap. It's a relatively quiet Monday. Um, I spoke to you kind of before Tokyo Open, uh, the first trading day of the week, and obviously there was not much of a reaction to the uh, bombings from Trump in Syria. When things did get moving a little bit, the dollar started selling off a bit in the early North American hours, and uh, I'll show you the get to the hourly chart, but. In the early morning, Trump accused China and Russia via tweet, of course, of devaluing their currencies. And that suggests to us that Trump is still actually paying close attention to the currency developments um, globally, even though the semi-annual U.S. Treasury report that was released on Friday did not name any uh, any. Uh, countries as, uh, you know, targets for the U.S. Treasury, um, you know, didn't label anyone as a currency manipulator. So it's interesting AI comes out, you know, Monday morning and sitting on the pot and decides to start tweeting against China and Russia. That, that did send the dollar a bit lower after those headlines. Um, uh, you could see it more in Euro. Uh, it started ticking up here. And the, the move up here in the euro from uh, 123.58 got up to 123.95. So the dollar did sell off a bit. Uh, dollar index was down about just under a half percent. Um, dollar yen was kind of interesting. It was heavy pretty much all day. Uh, no new, no real catalyst. You know the the Trump tweet. Uh, but risk was bid. Stocks did well. Stocks ended up closing up about, uh, I think, just over a percent. So they, they held their rally. Um, there was a little late they saw off, so, but they were up over a percent. The S&P and uh, the NASDAQ futures closed right at 1% higher. So with risk being strong, generally we're expecting some sort of cross-yen weakness. I know the correlation is sketchy of late, but it has been picking up and has been correlation between the two have been increasing um, I'd say the past month so you know you look at we'll take a look at the daily charts um, we'll start out with a couple, just a couple of the majors but um, Australian dollar on my work was showing a, a little bit of reversal higher that's after that sell-off that we had from the uh, 200 day on Friday um, the other one that jumped out at me was uh, Euro Yen. So Euro Yen, this is interesting. Kind of a doji day. Um, that's coming after a, you know Friday's up bar. Um, Kiwi had a little bit of a dip during London and then reversed higher, which isn't great because I'm short Kiwi, but I'm going to stick with this through CPI. And then uh, and Dollar CAD also had a reversal lower day. And this looks like important support. This 124.4550, so uh, 125.4550. So there, you know, I guess looking at the broad picture, we had some commodity currency strength. Um, if you look at the yen crosses, red bar there in CAD yen, euro yen. There's that doji. Sterling yen's gonna be higher because sterling was the best performing major currency on the day. Uh, maybe some positive developments out of uh, Brexit negotiations. Kiwi yen closed middle of the range. So again, we, we did discuss um, yesterday, and then my colleague during the uh, European Open, the European Open talked about selling yen crosses. So it's still kind of working. They did bounce. Um, you know, we need equities to kind of roll over in order to get get any love. I think on this uh, stronger yen play the theme that we've been uh, highlighting um, what else uh, the dollar CAD uh, is important this has been on our radar this is one of the more important currency pairs of the week um, 
we stayed here underneath the 200 day uh, got pretty close got up to 24 I believe today and the the 200 day comes at around 25 so the you know traders are using that as, a, as, as the resistance level um, a couple of our strategy people are going uh, a couple that I've read are are out of consensus calling the Bank of Canada that will actually hike 25 basis points this week with a neutral statement. Uh, there's only two out of 23 economists on Bloomberg calling for a rate hike, and market is pricing in the f like plus, uh, four basis point hike. So, um, you know, the, the, the one strategist was saying if they don't hike, then they will certainly sound hawkish and set themselves up for the next meeting. Um, but, you know, we'll be watching that. That's Wednesday, so, you know, it's a bit early. We also have Kiwi CPI coming out this week. Um, and, you know, so a, lot of, uh, a lot of the U.S. companies, a lot of standard uh, S&P 500 companies are, are releasing their earnings, uh, you know, bulk of them this week. Uh, so, anyhow, charts... Generally kind of quiet, a little bit of risk on with the U.S. equities, which is expected because I think, uh, you know, every analyst that I've listened to or read were saying that the, uh, the strategic military strikes by Trump actually, uh, you know, did, didn't damage, didn't kill any civilians and, and pretty much did what they were expecting, so... Um, I guess, uh, and then Russians respond, Russia's response has not been much of anything. So looks like it's kind of a, <clears throat> a kind of a one-off. They did their job. Now move on to the next thing, which is trade wars. Trump's lawyer Cohen, which could unravel at any time. It's a moving, you know, the Mueller investigation. There's a lot of moving parts. So uh, again, stay nimble and. Uh, We'll speak to you on the European Open. Good luck trading. All the best. Cheers.